Hi, this is Scott Picard with Verde Real Estate Group with today's real estate tip. Along with us today is Chris George from Attorneys Title Group LLC. Chris, how are you doing? I'm great, Scott. How are you? Awesome. I'm doing fantastic. So the topic today is what is a title company and what role does it play in a real estate transaction? And for that answer, I'm going to hand it over to Chris because I don't even know. Sure. Well, we kind of do two primary things, I think. Uh, the one role that we play that it's pretty obvious is that we facilitate the closing itself. So the buyers and the sellers, usually the agents, the loan officer perhaps, will all meet at a predetermined location and time and go over the loan documents and the closing documents. That's where everybody gets their money and gets their keys. Uh, that's usually when we'll meet everybody for the first time, like the buyers and the sellers and things like that. Um, but we also provide title insurance, and that's a little bit more esoteric, I think, for most people because they don't really think about what title insurance is. Yeah, what is it? Well, there are two types of title insurance. There's owner's title insurance and there's lender's title insurance. Now, you have to have lender's title insurance. Every lender is going to require that the purchaser of a home have lender's title insurance. That's just non-negotiable. And what does that cover? Like? Well, for a lender, what they care about is that their lien well, let me back up for one minute. So when you sign your loan documents, you sign a note, and your note essentially is you as the borrower and buyers promise to pay whatever money you're borrowing back to the lender at whatever terms you agree upon. That's your personal promise, but the lender wants more than that. They want that promise essentially collateralized um, against the property that you're buying. So that's what the mortgage does. The mortgage is a security instrument, which essentially allows the lender to step in and foreclose on your loan in the event you don't make your mortgage payments or default on your loan. That's mm -hmm. what the mortgage does. And so the lender wants to make sure that their mortgage is the first lien and only lien on the property. So if they foreclose, they don't need to worry about any other liens that existed before that mortgage was filed of record or anything like that. So a lien could be uh, another mortgage. Association uh, lien. Uh, mechanics, mechanics lien. lien. I, uh, a, a mechanics lien being someone did some work on the sure. property yep. and said they didn't get paid. Or yep. Maybe did get paid and still said they didn't. Right. Yes, yeah. exactly. Uh, an attorney's lien, uh, anything like that. Okay. Right. So anything. So when we do our title search, we want to make sure that all those existing liens are paid off at the time of closing. That way we know that the lender mortgage is that first lien and first lien position, we call it. That way, if they need to foreclose, which is a dim view and we never like to think about that, but you always right. have to operate under the worst case scenarios when it comes to insurance. And so lenders want to make sure if they have to foreclose, they can, and then they foreclose and take everything out and then they own the property free and clear. That's okay. what the lender's title insurance So is. that's the lender's title yep. insurance. So you're basically, the lender's requiring the buyer to, or borrower, mm -hmm. to take out this policy to protect the lender, their, their interest, yeah, the lender's right? interest, right. And then an owner's policy. That's different. That protects the owner, and that's optional. That's not something that is required to be purchased by the owner. I mean, we, in, we, we encourage it, I guess, to the extent that we encourage anything, just because it's relatively inexpensive in relation to the coverage that you get if a problem arises. It's usually between you know, $200 and $400, I'm going to say it's price. usually a few hundred bucks. Yeah, a few hundred right? bucks. You pay it one time, you pay it at closing, and then that's it. And then it's good for however long you've owned the home. And of course, you're only paying for your equity position there. So if you're three percent down, it would be less than if you're putting twenty percent down. No, well, yes, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose so. So the idea being is that yeah, if you borrow hundred percent, you know your pay, your your owner's policy is not going to be very large. But the okay. more money you put down, the higher your owner's policy will be. But the less your loan policy will be. So the total cost of the premium is going to be the same. Okay. It's just a matter of how it's allocated. Right. It's allocated between your down payment and whatever your loan balance is. But the total end result is going to be the same dollar amount. Well, Should it's you. interesting. I joked that, you know, I said I didn't know what this is. Of course, I do know what it is. I've done about 1,500 real estate transactions right. in my career. Um, in, I've purchased, you know, dozens of properties uh, personally, and I've always, always got both the lender sure. policy, which was required in most cases, uh, or all cases, and I always got an owner's policy, because right. for me, uh, you know, there are options, right? Mm -hmm. People could get a, uh, a title opinion, right, from an yep. attorney. An attorney, sure, yeah. But you're going to pay two, three, four hundred dollars yeah, in I most mean, cases anyhow. Probably. right. Yeah, and, 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 you know, I'm speaking in general, general terms, so personally, I would always get the policy. Right. So, I mean, and it's, you know, I'd say most people, the vast majority of people do, but they don't yep. have to. But what it does do is that it, it's essentially, well, the, 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 the term is it provides marketable title. That's what we're insuring is marketable title, meaning you can turn around and sell it and not have anybody object to the condition of title when right. you sell it. 
And so we do a title search as part of the whole process, and that'll tell you who the current owner is, what the legal description of the property is, and what encumbrances are currently against the property. And encumbrances can mean many things. We care about mortgages, of course, and any other liens because we want to make sure those are paid off at closing because we want to make sure that when the buyer turns around and sells whenever they do, that those things don't pop up and become an issue for them when they sell. Because right. then it becomes right. our issue. The other encumbrances we look for, was it part of an association? Is there a, are there covenants, conditions, restrictions, you know, that are part of a declaration that are filed of record? Is there a developer's agreement? Are there easements? Things like that. Right. You utility know, easements. Utility, and, and those are very common, especially right. in new builds, you know. And those things are all okay. That doesn't defeat the marketability of title, but they would be shown on your title insurance policy because they stick around and run with the land for quite some time. Right. But you need to know that they exist as a buyer because you obviously want to make an informed decision about what you're buying. Right. And you want to know if there are easements or anything like that that uh, that are out there. Well, so. yeah, and even if you know, you're like, it's something as a buyer, you have to look ahead to when, yeah. when you're a when seller. When you're a seller, right. right. Because even if you say, yeah, it's not a big deal, I don't care, you have to look, you know, talk to your real estate agent, talk to an attorney about, you know, who may or may not care when you sell. Right. Because that could have a huge impact sure. on, on, on your marketability and value of the property. And so we try to flag that stuff, you know, when we see it. And I think most title companies do. You know, right. you see an issue where uh, something is a little bit uncommon or untoward, you want to make sure everybody's aware of it, especially if it's something that's going to stick around and be part of the property. It, would this stuff all be listed somewhere? Uh, yeah. It's a, the ti we issue a title commitment. The title commitment split into three different sections. Schedule A, which just has your general owner information, loan information, and the legal description, and the purchase price. And then B1 and B2. Schedule B1 tells you what needs to happen for us to close, and Schedule B2 essentially tells you what's going to stick on the policy you know, after you buy. Okay. And so the B1 stuff's all going to go. So that's not a big deal. But the Those are stuff. conditions to close Yeah, like the you need a deed from the seller to the buyer. You need okay. a new mortgage executed by the buyer. You need to pay off the mortgage that's currently you know, out there by the seller. Things okay. like that. Those all things right. all go. And then the B2 stuff is a little bit different. Like you know, if there's an easement against your property, let's say that there's a driveway easement for the benefit of another party, we want to make sure that you as the buyer are aware of it because maybe you don't want your neighbor driving over your property to get to their property. Right. You know, so those and those things don't happen very often, but those are the things you want to make sure they're aware of because it could be a problem for them after the fact if they were not aware. Well, I think you look at this almost I mean, in, in a similar way. I look at like uh, the results of a property inspection. You know, everyone's going to have a different threshold and a different you know, criteria. You know, mm -hmm. Like some people, uh, if they're buying a hundred year old house and the windows are original, right. that freaks them out. Yep. Uh, one person may look at an, an, uh, an easement for someone to drive over your property as not a big deal. Right. Someone else someone might, might have a problem it, with you know, it. They, they might yep. think that's the you know, nuclear holocaust that's manifesting it. it's itself, a, right? And it's a deal breaker. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Well, anything else you want to add on this, Chris? You know, I think that's it. You know, again, we to have two roles. We provide, we provide the title insurance, usually by generating a title commitment and then loan policies and owner's policies. The owner policy is optional. The loan policy is not. And then uh, we meet you. We go over your loan documents uh, and your other title-related documents and closing docs at the closing. It usually takes about an hour, give or take. We try to make it as painless as possible. What do I need to bring to that closing? Okay, it's a good question. If you're the buyer, you need to bring your driver's licenses. We okay. always want to make sure you, we, you can verify your identity. And the lender wants to make sure of that, too. And you need to make sure it's an unexpired <laughs> driver's license. What if I don't have a driver's license? Passport would work, too. Okay. Uh, okay. One of those two state would be ID, great. State ID, state issue. State ID would be good. Anything anything issued from the state of any, from anything unexpired from any state, really, that's, okay. an, that's a state ID card. Or federal ID. Federal ID, passport, those things are all Not a fine. library card. Probably or, not a okay, library okay. card or like a, you know, a property tax bill. Those things aren't going to fly. Okay. Or a credit card. None of that's going to work. Okay. Um, and then your money. So you're going to need to bring, usually if you're a buyer, you're going to need to bring some cash to close in as part of the transaction. And we'll communicate that, and most title companies will communicate that to you. And as soon as they know that number, they'll get it to the buyer because we want to make sure they know that in advance. Okay. Um, and then if you're the seller, keys, garage door openers, uh, and uh, your licenses. A or warranty ideas. information. Any, yeah, anything you might like find that. that be helpful. The, the old abstract of title. If that exists, you know, those are getting a little bit harder to find these I days. I have lots of those. I, yeah. I think I've donated them to the Smithsonian. Right. They're a bit of a collector's <laughs> item now. Yeah. So, But that's pretty much it. You know, All and right. then we try to get in and out in about an hour, and it's usually pretty fun. So Awesome. Awesome. Well, this has been really, really helpful. Chris, if someone wants to get a hold of you for more information, what's the easiest sure. best way? Well, my phone number, it's my cell phone number, so I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. It's 651-338-6632. You can also email me. Uh, my email address is cgeorge at attorneystitle 
mn.com. I try to be very responsive, so I'll get back to you as soon as I can, uh, whether by phone call or email. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, Chris. This has been really helpful. I'm Scott Picard with Verde Real Estate Group. Like always, if you want to get a hold of us, the number is 612-600-8888, 612-600-8888. Call or text or online 24-7 at verde dash real estate dot com we hope this content has been valuable and as always if we can be of further service please let us know thank you